weekend. Mm -hmm. So you wonder when the next 9-11 happens, uh, will we see them joining, uh, linking arms and singing God Bless America, or will we see more of the spectacle that we saw over the shooting in Tucson? We're back with Gang of Four. It's 1023 on KTSA. It's 1026 on News Talk 550 KTSA, Gang of Four for a Friday morning. Stephen Stoley, Nico LaHood, Yami Vietin. You got it. All right, every time I say it, I want you to give me the thumbs up or thumbs, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs we'll, up. And we'll edit out all the mistakes when we uh, do the podcast <laughs> later on. On Gang of Four today. All right, so um, leading the way in this, uh, it must have been the politics uh, effort, was the sheriff of Pima County, Arizona, Clarence Dupnick, who gave a very, very uh, dramatic news briefing Saturday early evening. Uh, he looked very emotional. You, you take into account the fact that he was probably in shock. This was the biggest thing he'd ever been involved with. He personally knew Congresswoman Giffords and some of the other victims. He uh, comes out and, and directly connects politics and what he kept calling the vitriol of politics uh, to the shooting. This is at a time when they've got a guy in custody who hasn't said one word to them. This is before we know anything about him. This is before we even know if he's the only one involved in the shooting. Remember, there was earlier uh, suspicion there may have been a crossfire or an accomplice. Um, he could not bring himself, Nico LaHood, to be unbiased and professional for 10 minutes. How is he going to continue? How does he go forward? Uh, d does he need to resign? I, I haven't thought of it that way, and I don't think he needs to resign. I think he obviously had some demons or battles inside of himself for him to react that way, and I think, I think it became real to him. I think you made a point that he actually knew some of the victims. I mean, how many people look, take a position like this? I'm not trying to go off track, but how many people are anti-death penalty until they become victims themselves? Right, right. And now it's real to them. So the theory of their position is now tested, and then now they're forced to change it. But Maybe. you're 75 years old. Yummy. You, you, you don't know how to restrain that or, or put out a, a, at least a neutral facade, even if inside you're churning. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe how off the rails he was. He should have. I mean, he should have. You know, you're, you're leading this investigation. <coughs> we need calm from you. Me, as a citizen sitting there, I need you to be calm. I need you to be looking at what's going on. And, but at the same time, he knew the congresswoman's, I think, father. He's mm -hmm. friends with the family. Mm -hmm. So how do you pull yourself away? So maybe he should have said, you know, let's let somebody else deal with this. I will go up, read the facts, and then get somebody else up there to answer the questions because I cannot pull my personal opinions out of this right now. And the whole country's looking at you. Yeah. The whole country, everybody's eyes were on what was going on there. So we needed calm. Was it the right time, Stephen Stoley, to say, I need to get this off my chest? Uh, no. By the way, I want to say no. this. No, actually, he was like a can of lighter fluid. I think he just sparked it to a bigger flame, to a bigger... And maybe embers going on then at that time or something, but then he threw that on and everybody started talking about, oh, yeah, well, I guess it might have been Sarah Palin this, this, that, you know, the, the uh -huh. politicians and stuff. And I just think he... F I don't think somebody like a sheriff should fuel the flames of a tragic event like that. They well, should you know, be calm and collected. To, to go to what you're saying, Yami, I could almost see your point if it was only that one time. If he had composed himself later in the evening right. or the next <laughs> day. But, I mean, days and days later, he was still putting this out there. And even when, when uh, interviewers would, would ask him, do you have any evidence of this? Is there any connection? This person had? Well, no, there isn't. But, and he would just continue on. He, he's still digging the hole. He's using a platform. I mean, I guess to him, this was something that has been bothering him for a while. Here's your national platform mm -hmm. to say, 15 hey, minutes. exactly. So I guess that's the time he decided. And, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I don't know what was going on through his head. Would I have done that personally? No, yeah. not at all. I got Nico, an does he damage do. the case? I think he damages the investigation. No. I do. I mean, because then... How <clears> so? In what way? Well, he has to be... A, he, his job is to gather evidence, to pass it over to whatever prosecutorial agency there's gonna, that's going to prosecute this case, and it would be a state agency, in my opinion, or it could be federal, too, but... And, and how can you... How can you say that he had an unbiased opinion and he was neutral? So, it definitely was out of character. Not for him, I'm not saying, but for his position. And, and like, you, I think you made a great point. If he might have had that one slip-up so close to the event... He could have rebounded, I think, in subsequent interviews, and he didn't. 
Uh, a lawyer friend of mine <coughs> uses the term the, the tree of evidence. Uh, you probably heard it's, that it's before. It's called the fruits of the poisonous yeah. tree. So of. has he poisoned the tree? I think he has. I mean, look at the O.J. Simpson trial. I mean, I think there are things like that because, you remember, you're working off a reasonable doubt standard, right? It's not an absolute standard. Right. And so I think that... I think so that a good defense lawyer could maybe plant some seeds of doubt about different things based on the, on the fact that he was close to this and maybe emotional. And Potentially. I mean, with the amount of witnesses and stuff like yeah. that, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure they have other... Right. Uh, much other... Uh, abundance of evidence to yeah. go on, but... What about the still, jury pool? But here's a... Uh, but the jury pool, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I don't yeah. know how you get a change of venue. It's, it, there's right. no sense. You can't go anywhere to get yeah. a fair trial, but um, it, the facts are what they are. And, and so that young man put himself in that position and... He needs to be held accountable. So if you're a prosecutor in Pima County, is this making you crazy, or are you just shaking your head going, oh, there's uh, Sheriff Dupnick again? I mean, is this really bothering you? It would bother me. It would bother me if I was prosecuting this case. It would, because I don't want to give I don't want to give any opportunity to the defense or to the defendant, if I truly believe he's guilty, to either get off light or to actually be found not guilty for some reason. I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking in hypotheticals here, and maybe not specifically this case, but it would bother me as a prosecutor, yes. Let me ask this hypothetical question. 1031 on Gang of Four on KTSA. Now, after we started to learn about this uh, Lofner guy, uh, it became pretty clear, I think we can all agree, <coughs> loner, disturbed, incoherent ramblings. It's not clear that there is a belief system or that there was a... Uh, you know, uh, an ideology behind this. Not even clear that Congresswoman Giffords was uh, a, a particular target, that she may have been almost a target of opportunity for him more than, more than uh, anything. What if we had found out after a few days that he'd been to the Tea Party rallies? What if we had found out he was a registered Republican? What if we'd found out he'd worked for her Republican opponent uh, last fall, uh, Jesse Kelly? What if we'd found out that um, he actually had the the affiliations, Steve, that <coughs> were suspected from the start. Then what would be happening right now? Well, I probably think this part of the media wished that he had been immediately found out about that because they'd have so much more they could just explode onto this to this situation. It would be, I think, it'd be, uh, obviously, it'd be, I don't know. How do you tell? Well, could we what? then blame? If he had been at a Tea Party rally, nobody, if he had nobody's been a ever said a Tea Party to to shoot somebody. Nobody's ever said at a Tea Party to uh -huh. you know use violence as a way of uh -huh. th the Tea Party. To me, is just another faction of saying this is how we voice our expression, our opinion, and that's mm -hmm. the best thing you have in America is the abil ability to be able to do that. But he's a he's a whack job. <laughs> he's a whack job. There's nothing else you can say about it. But what if he was an affiliated whack job? Hmm. Well, I mean, then I think from an investigator, uh, investigatory standpoint, you would look in to see if there's any co-conspirators or potential co-defendants. Once you've explored that and done your due diligence, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what ethnic group he belonged to, what nationality, what what um, political party he belonged to, because, I mean, there's good and bad apples in every sector and every part of our society. You know, Yami, so. I'll tell you why I bring this up. The de The defense from people like Sarah Palin and uh, people in talk radio has been, I think, a little off. We've said, they have said, look, he wasn't even part of this. He wasn't listening to us. He wasn't uh, a part of this movement. That's not the only thing that needs to be said. The other thing that needs to be said, and Stephen, you kind of hinted at it, was um, even if he had been at the meeting or had joined the group, um, how do you how do you connect a political movement or a political belief system with carrying out this act? H how would you uh, prove, in essence, that by hearing anti health care uh, reform rhetoric, uh, you were inspired to shoot uh, this member of Congress? You, you don't. I mean, they, they, I think they covered it. You got crazy people on the left, on the right, in the middle. Mm -hmm. They're coming at you from everywhere. How are you going to blame? How is anybody going to say this mother, Sarah Palin, really wanted somebody to kill these people in Arizona? I mean, come on. You know, we're all adults. Most of us, our brain works pretty Most well. Most of us are adults. <laughs> well, there you go. Most of us take in information. You know, we process it. I don't go out and shoot anybody. You know, I mean, it's the same saying about heavy metal music. You know, 
Well, the heavy metal music's what well, told them that, to do it. That industry gets scolded routinely. So does the video game industry. So does Hollywood. I mean, they get scolded routinely. If there's even the f- most tentative connection between somebody that does a dastardly act and they saw a movie or they heard a band, uh, the media go- jumps all over that and says they they were driven to do it. Or 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 another thing we heard a lot was we got to watch what we say. We have to be careful about how we say it because we might. Uh, uh, tip somebody or tilt somebody or or, or uh, somebody who's on the brink we might uh, you know tip them over the edge and they go and do this um, see I think I think conservatives have to be very careful with how they defend themselves on this it's not enough to say he's not one of ours you've also got to say we have the right to make these arguments and have this discussion and we have to be the loyal opposition um, and we're not responsible if somebody on their own, of their own volition, decides to do something like this. And I didn't hear anybody saying that. Um, he, he's an individual. He was not sent on a mission to exactly. do this. Uh, but to just say, well, he's not one of ours. We, we looked and we can't find any uh, ev- <laughs> That's not enough because the next one probably will be one of yours, you know? The next shooter will be a member of some political party or will have gone to some meeting, right, Nico? I, I agree, and I think there needs to be a balance. I think we need a balance in every aspect of our lives. I think when you're in a position of influence and you're someone that people look up to, whatever it is, whether it's politically, in, in the media, a movie star, whatever, a sports star, I think you have to be cognizant of what you say. I mean, in reality, because people do hang on every word that you say. But on the other side of that argument, we're all adults. And this is when you blame someone else or blame a group or, or blame a th- an ideology or a thinking, then it's trying to take accountability away from that person. Everyone needs to be <laughs> accountable for their own actions, number one. But when you are in a position of influence, I think that I think common sense tells you that you need to be aware of what you say and that people are, are really listening to you. So you have influence over folks. Yeah. I uh, I put this on my Facebook page this week. We must reject the idea that every time a law is broken, society is guilty rather than the lawbreaker. It's time to restore the American precept that each individual is accountable for his actions. I agree. With you. Who said that? Ronald Reagan. Wow. Mm. Sorry, Nico. No, I mean, I just he said, was a Democrat, so, you know, <laughs> it's okay. maybe he first thought that. When I don't know. That's not, I agree with it. I mean, he's right, and you were right to put it on your Facebook. Do we do, Have we gone so far in this sort of pop culture, let's understand, let's get into the mind, let's, you know, that maybe we've forgotten that sometimes um, at the end of the day it wasn't our fault. We, we didn't make this happen, Stephen Stoley. I, heard, I had people calling my show this week saying, I've, I feel bad that this happened. I, I feel like, I, I feel like uh, we all uh, contributed to this. I don't. I don't feel like I contributed to this. No. I, I don't, don't, I don't get where people are getting. Th- I, I I wonder where people are getting this idea that that America. There's something wrong with America because this happened in in Tucson. Well, there is something wrong with America because when I was six years old, I could walk down the street with a BB gun or a pellet gun, and CNN wouldn't show up. <laughs> you know, I wasn't <laughs> going to go shoot the eyes out of kids. I was going to go shoot s- some rabbits or doves or something. Yeah. And nowadays, CNN would show up if somebody right. had a BB gun. You know, at six years old, or they come with a slingshot to school. So something society-wise did change. But I think you're right. I think it's so easy for anybody to sit there and blame somebody else for their problems, and they just sit there instead of taking accountability for themselves or or what whatever they've done, they sit there and go, well, I did this because so-and-so did this to me, or I was influenced by that, and I'm going, well, no. To me, that's more offensive. I mean, uh, Sarah Palin can take care of herself. I'm not worried. I'm not losing any sleep over Sarah Palin, but it was offensive to me that that there had to be something wrong with America for this to happen. Mm. That's the, that's the, the narrative here. We can come up with so many examples that would just shock the conscience of people if they really paid attention, but nobody pays attention until it, it happens to them. Pearl Harbor, 9-11, mm-hmm. now this, because mm-hmm. of the national mm-hmm. attention it's getting. People have to feel like that they've been victimized. I, but I think that a lot of people feel like they feel responsible because maybe in their way they added to the toxicity of the arguments. I mean, there's a way to disagree. Let me tell you one thing my pop taught me out of many when I was young. He said, you can say anything to anybody, whether it's your principal or whether it's the president of the United States, as long as you say it right. And I've always taken that with me throughout my whole life, whether it was a discussion with a teacher. Mm-hmm a coach, Mm -hmm. in court, a judge, whomever, say anything to anybody as long as you say it right. And we don't say it right anymore. So I think people are talking about that. Did America cause this this tragedy? Of course not. That nut job did it Mm -hmm. on his own. But I think what they mean by that, and I'm just assuming and speculating, is that the toxicity that, that everyone is adding to the fire 
mm-hmm. and we really have a breakdown of our foundation, I think, from when I even grew up. 